Let's make a lamp. We'll start off by changing our document settings from millimeters to inches. Then we'll create a form. We'll start by creating a cylinder. We will set the cylinder on the ground plane. We'll click the center point, move the mouse away, and I'm going to type in 7 for a 7 inch diameter. I'll hit tab to lock that and click to set it. In my cylinder options, I'm going to change the height to 14, 14 inches tall. And I'll say OK. Now this will be a surface that will act as a guide for our lamp. So I'm going to sculpt this. I'm going to right click and say Edit Form. I can double click to grab these rings and I can stretch these as desired to create this lampshade. Press and pull up and down and let these be whatever you'd like them to be for your design. Once I'm happy with this, I'm going to say Finish Form. And I'll create a new form, and this will be my actual lampshade. I'm going to go ahead and do Create Form again. This time I'm going to create faces. And instead of selecting a work plane like I normally would, I'm going to turn on something called Object Snap. And that lets me now snap to the surface and use it as a guide. I'm going to start off with a multiple side face, which will let me do some curvature. So everywhere this black dot goes, you can see it's following this underlying shape. I'm going to create some triangles first. I'm going to go right back over this yellow dot to get a triangle. And I've got to be careful to let the dots turn blue, which lets me know that they have snapped onto the faces below. And I know that if I create four triangles, uh, once this finishes up, it's going to be a nice curve. Now I'm going to switch over to a four-sided. And this part's up to you. You can design any shape you'd like for your lampshade. Think of it like a lattice structure. You can even break off from here. One trick to note is that the farther apart these faces are, for example, if I go from here all the way to the top, you lose accuracy in tracing that original underlying shape. So if you wanted to really follow that curvature, keep the faces close together, something like this. Or if you're less concerned, you can go a farther distance. I'll do a couple more of these. I'll rotate my view by dragging this cube up in the top right. And there. Now if everything's good and all the faces are connected, when I say OK, that's going to round off into a nice shape. It's going to follow that curvature. I'll go ahead and create another one. I'll do a face. And I'll turn on Object Snap. And I'll do my multiple sides again. And start this one over here. A little further to this side. And I'll start by creating my triangles, get that rounded edge. When you start that first triangle, go back to that original yellow dot, you get close. Uh, for your remaining ones, you go back and snap, that dot will turn blue. And we'll do some four sided. Now, let's say I messed up right here and I didn't snap that all the way. If I click here, that's not quite what I wanted. I could keep modeling, but sometimes it's good to correct as I go. I can go ahead and say OK. You can see I've got a split here, it's not quite right. I can use the modify weld vertices and grab these two vertices and weld them together. So now that shape's correct. And the cool thing with faces is I can go back and create another face using Object Snap. And as soon as I click on this original, I'm back to that edit mode. It goes back to box mode. And I can keep on editing and adding faces here. So that's important for good results to make sure all these edges touch. And you've got a nice blue dot that lets you know you've snapped 
back to that original face. Now these shapes are really up to you. You can design this lampshade however you'd like, creating a lattice type lampshade. So I'll say OK. That finished off nicely. Now the next step, these are still surfaces. There are no thickness to them. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Modify, and I'll do Thicken. I'll find my Thicken command right there. And I'll select one of these, and I'll do a tenth of an inch thickness. And I'll right click and I'll repeat thicken. The thickness is up to you. I'm going to pick a tenth of an inch here. There we go. And I'll say finish form. And I'm going to open up my bodies here and I see this original surface. I can call this a guide because that's what it is. I can turn that off. It's just a guide. And I've got these two bodies I've created. I'm going to go ahead and create a pattern and I'm going to do a circular pattern here. So a circular pattern. And I'll select one of these bodies. Now right now they're bodies. My pattern type might be set to faces or something else. I'm going to change that to bodies. Pattern this body. And I'm just going to pick one at a time. I'll pick my axis. And that's going to be my up axis here. And then I can adjust the quantity until I'm happy with that lattice shape. So whatever quantity you want to do for your lampshade and I'll say OK. All right, so there's the first one. You can see I made a bunch of bodies here as it patterned and I'll repeat that process again. I'll do a create, I'll do pattern, I'll do a circular pattern. I'm going to grab my other shape here, make sure it's set to bodies, grab this shape, select my axis, which again I'm using the origin as my center point for this model to make this easy on myself when I click this up axis and I can adjust the number of times that's going to spin around as well. So I'm happy with that. I'll say OK. And there it is. And you can see it's starting to take the shape of that lampshade with this lattice structure. The downside is I've created a bunch of bodies here. and It can be a little bit confusing. So one trick for organization in Fusion 360, I can right click on this bodies and I can say new group. I'm going to call this lampshade lattice. And now I can take these bodies, I click the first one, I hold shift on my keyboard and click the last one to grab all of them at the same time. And I drag and drop onto this folder. And now they're all here. I can turn it on and off together. If I drill down and open this up, I can see they're all here individually as well. Helps me stay organized. I can even drop this guide in there too if I want to just hide that a little better. So there's that lampshade. Now I need to create the base of the lampshade. So it's a good time to save and call this lamp and shade. I'll save that. To create the base, I'm going to do a sketch. And I'll do the line tool. I'm going to put it on this vertical plane. And I need the base, and I also need a little holder for the light bulb. You can model it separate parts or all as one. I might I'll go ahead and model it all as one this time. I'm going to draw the shape of the L going down. And you decide what distance. If you want it to be a short little light or tall like for a desk. I'm going to do 14 inches on mine going down. Type in 14 on my keyboard, then tab locks it in. Then I can click to set that. And I'm going to go to the right. And this is the diameter of that base. I'm going to do 5 inches for mine. And I'll click tab locks that in. I can click or press enter to wrap that up. Now I can go vertical and this will be the height of that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the top. Uh, maybe I'll do one inch on that and say enter. I'll do another line here. And this one's a little bit tricky. This is going to be essentially the half dimension of this rug. It's going to revolve it around so that whatever it is is going to be doubled. So I'm going to go ahead and do four and a half inches so that my rod ends up being one inch as thick. I'll say enter there. I'll draw a line up here to the top. And I don't need to type in dimensions here because I can hover over this original point and pull out. And I get this dashed blue line 
it lets me line up with that. Click, set to that. I now need something to hold this, uh, the actual bulb. So I'm going to come over, uh, let's say another half an inch. Tab locks that in. I'll click and I'll come up here. So I'll type an inch and then I'll come over uh, just a little bit here. I might do a tenth of an inch, 0.1. There's also an offset command, which I can use as well. I can drag these dimensions around to stay a little more organized. Come down, and this is going to be 0.9. And my last line to wrap this up takes me back to the origin. And I notice that I've had a little gap here. I didn't quite line these up, so I'm going to go ahead and go to my sketch. And there is an extend tool here. And this extend tool will extend this line up to the top. Just click here, it's extended. It turns yellow to let me know it's a continuous shape and profile. I can also come in and do a fillet on this edge if I'd like. You can do fillets after the fact or during the sketch. Um, at this point, it's probably fine to do it during the sketch for this simple model. I'm going to say stop sketch. And so there it is. I'm going to do a create and I'm going to do a revolve. And grab this profile, select my axis, which again, if I'm using the center point of the origin as a center of my model, I can use this vertical axis, or I can click on this line as well. It's going to spin that around. I want to make sure this sets a new body. If it's set to join, that means it overlaps something, and I don't want this to join with my lampshade. I want it to be separate, so I'm going to say new body, and I'll say OK. So now I've got this new body here, and I'm going to call this lamp stand. Stay organized. Now I want to create the bulb. And it can be a little bit tough to see up here, so I'm going to go ahead and I can turn this lamp shade on and off as I need to. Let's go ahead and model in the light bulb. And this for this assignment, we're learning about organization and uh, creating some form, so we don't need to be super precise. We're just going to create the glass enclosure uh, for that light bulb. I can turn off this lampshade lattice if that helps me. I can also, in my display mode, come in and change my visual style to wireframe with hidden edges. And what that lets me do, and if I don't like the way that looks, I can come in and also turn off. There's an effect here called ambient occlusion and anti-aliasing that can kind of make it a little bit confusing. You know, the less of these effects you have on uh, while you're modeling, some of these can change the way everything looks. Turn those off for now. And that lets me kind of see inside of this model a little bit better. I'm going to create a sketch, start with a line, and I'll use this vertical yellow plane. Click on that guy. And I can click on this base, you can see it here. So I'll click here, and I can draw a line up vertical. And I'll take mine out 1.25 inches. Tab on my keyboard locks that in. I can click and set that. Now to create the actual bulb, you know, the rounded part, I can create by clicking and holding a tangent line. And that's going to take me out on a tangent there. Then I can do a tangent by clicking and holding again back. And as I move my mouse around, I'll notice that it's going to find that center point with the blue dashed line, that center point there, as I move this around. So I can actually go back to that line. Now this would create kind of a weird shape, even a heart-like shape. So what I can do is add an additional line here, something like this and I can create a tangent constraint. I can say this line is tangent to this guy. And that's going to go ahead and take that back to maybe a little bit too far. If I drag this line up and over, it's going to grow until it gets to that midpoint. So I can add over here a construction line as a guide, create a line from the center point, select that, and I'm going to create that into a construction line. 
And you notice if I drag this up, it's going to eventually cross there. And I can be more accurate with that if I'd like to. I can add this additional constraint called coincident, and I can find this line here, this point, and I can then adjust it coincident to this line. You can see it moved it there, so it's tangent to this line and coincident to this line. And now it's going to, when it revolves, create a nice shape for me. Now this extra line here, I need it for my constraints, but I don't want it to be part of my model, so I can right-click and say construction. That's now a construction line. The last thing I need to do is to sketch and create an offset. So I'll grab this shape. And I need to give this a little bit of thickness. It'll have some glass and Point of illustration, let's do 0.1, so a tenth of an inch, and I'll hit enter to lock that in. Now I zoom into these ends, they're still open, so I'm not quite making a profile. I'm going to create an extra line, so I'll hit L on my keyboard for a line, and I'll close this off here, and I'll zoom in down to the bottom. And I'll use some line, one line, to wrap that up there. Now to see my results, I might go back to my display settings and change my visual style to uh, shaded with visible edges. And you notice that's going to turn my coloration back on so I can see that's a full profile there. And now I can say stop sketch. And I'll do create and I'll do a revolve. I'll grab my profile, select my axis, which is my up axis here in the middle or any of these lines is fine. If I have a hard time selecting something, I can always in Fusion click and hold, and that will let me see my axis, or here in this case, the sketch line. So I'll pick my axis, and there it is. I've created that bulb. Now I can right click, and I can do an appearance, and I'm going to make this a glass material, so a clear glass. Oh, and I see I made a mistake. When I did that revolve, it joined to the other part, so it's all one part. As that happens to you, you can always go back, find this revolve, hit edit feature. And I see here it's a join because they were touching, and I change this to a new body. Keep it separate. Say OK. So now I can right click and I can do this appearance. I can do glass, clear, drop that on. So now I need some sort of filament uh, to light this light bulb up. And to do that, I need to put that up inside of the light bulb. So I might come back and do a construct and an offset plane. And I can offset off any flat plane. I was going to pick the top of this base here and drag this plane up into the light bulb here. So maybe 18 inches. I'll say enter. Now I've got this new plane up here inside the light bulb and I can create a sketch and I'll do a rectangle and a center rectangle. And instead of using the origin, I'm going to use this new plane. I'll click right in the center. It's right there in the middle. And I'll pull this box out and I give it dimensions. I'll say one and I'll hit tab one. So it's a one inch by one inch box. Tab locks that in and I can click or press enter to wrap it up. Click my home to make sure that looks okay. And I'll say stop sketch. And now I can use my Create Extrude, and I can select that square I just made and pull this up for my LED filament. I'll say 6. Say OK on that. And now I'm going to turn off this bulb. I'm going to call it Bulb here, make it easier to see. Turn that on and off. And now this is my filament. Turn my bulb off. I'm going to use some additional tools. I'm going to create some cylinders on the face of this filament. Again, I can use by hovering my mouse to find some midpoints and some key locations. I'll do 0.75 for that. And again, I got to be careful, make sure that this is a new body so that's not joined. And I can change my height to whatever I'd like that to be. And say OK. Now from here I can right click and I can change the appearance so it's actually an LED light. I want it to glow. So I'm going to go to my emissive under other and I'll find one of these LED lights. 
I'll do the 50 lumen, drag and drop that here. Now I've got my LED and I'm going to create some patterns. So I'll create a pattern. I'm going to do a rectangular pattern first. I'll grab this guy and I'm going to pick the direction. I can pick my axis again and I've got this arrow to drag down. I can do as many or as few as I'd like. Let's see if four will work well. Four looks good. Say OK. And I'm going to do another create and I'll do a pattern, this time a circular pattern. And what do I want to pattern? I'll do my bodies. So I'll grab this and I'll hold command or control to grab all four. Select my axis again. And instead of three, I want to do four. So it gets all four sides and I'll say OK. And I'll orbit around to make sure this looks good. Now I'm starting to get disorganized again here with all these bodies. Another way to say organized and a great way is to create a component. And components are important especially to make an assembly and use joins. I need to create this uh, into components. So I'll start with this bulb and I'll go ahead and say I'll right click on this and I'll say create components from bodies. And So now that's a component called bulb. And I can grab the filament and all these LED lights. I can drag and drop them here on this bulb. So now I've got this bulb which I can turn on and off. And inside of the bulb I'll still find all those bodies are here. But now I've got a nice component called bulb. So it's another way to stay organized and a great way for uh, creating assemblies. And now I'll turn on our lampshade lattice. Turn that on here. And I notice that my bulb is pretty big. It's, it's kind of huge. If I wanted to make a change, I can always go back to that sketch where I created the bulb, uh, edit the sketch, and adjust some of these things down. So I could make some adjustments to get the bulb the right size by going back and editing that sketch. Now to wrap up here, I might want to take this lamp stand and I'll right click and I'll say create components from bodies. And now that's a lamp stand and the bulb are separate components. I'm also going to take my lampshade lattice. Now that I know that I've got this complete, I can right click and make this a component as well. I can bring all these bodies into that lampshade. Great thing about components to help me stay organized. I can grab a material and place it right on a component. It's going to apply to everything in that component a lot easier than selecting it individually. Now I'll say close. And with the lamp, I can go ahead and go to my model, my render environment, and create a rendering. Thanks.